Hi all, I'm with uh, Costas here today, and we're going to do a joint discussion video, so it's a bit of an experiment. Um, the game we're going to choose is Nidor's Immortal Game. So this is one of his great attacking games. He was playing black against a person called Glucksburg in the Warsaw Tournament of 1929. Mm -hmm. So Glucksburg played d4, mm -hmm. and Nidor, he played the aggressive Dutch defence. Yes. It's, it's quite funny. Uh, Petrosian once made the joke: um, if your opponent make, wanna play, wants to play the Dutch defence, why stop him? I think this game will show you why why you should try and stop him. So, anyway. So yeah, White White continued with c4. So he didn't want to play any tricky like new system, you know, like um, any bishop g5. So it's a mainstream Dutch defence with Black now committing the pawn structure with e6. So he's preparing um, the stone wall system with mm. d5. And often that's giving White a clear strategy of, of trying to exchange off dark squared bishops to get onto the dark squares. So White plays knight f3, and now Nidorf does commit the pawn to d5. So he's got that kind of stonewall pawn structure. So potentially he's got um, dangerous weaknesses on the dark squares, particularly e5 and c5 might, might be dangerous um, if White can survive the middle game. In this game, though, uh, White didn't survive the middle game. It was um, a brilliant attacking game, as we'll see. So after e3, now c6 was played. So black's got a lot of pawns on, on light squares. After mm. bishop d3, bishop d6. Mm. And now both sides castle. And white now plays knight e2. Mm. And it looks here as if he's transferring the knight over to the king side uh, to start some kind of king side attack here. Uh, and it's quite it's quite funny what happens <laughs> very shortly to White in this position. So yeah. how his intentions rebound against him. Yeah, Black just develops this um, knight to d7. So he's not um, trying, for example, to get this bishop out like this. So he, he's not too worried about his bad bishop here. He's just mm. continuing with knight d7. And, and the funny thing about this is that you know here we are, eight moves. Everyone's pretty made quite standard developing developing moves here. There's nothing earth shattering about this position, but after White's next move, um, what happens is we get, you know, a wonderful attacking uh, display from Black, which just shows you that anyone can produce an immortal game given the right bit of help. So, so White's next move, uh, Drift, is... Um, yeah, Knight G5. Yeah. And, and this, this kind of... Um, well, I mean, I'm not sure what he's planning here, whether he's thinking about F4, or bringing the other, the other Knight to F4, or... You know whether he's you know he's just attacking the e6 pawn actually you know on the surface of it, um, but what what this does is it, it walks into um, a, a Greek gift type of sacrifice, uh, and uh, you know as Schiff and I are both Greek, I think we can both safely say you should always be aware of Greeks that come bearing <laughs> gifts, can't you? So so here. Um, Black just he just went for it, didn't he, Triff? Yeah, um, if you can spot the next move, that's good. Or stop the video if if, if you want a bit more time. We're going to show you the next move now. So it was um, Bishop takes h2. So immediately, if if the White King takes on h2, then it would seem as though let's have a look quick look at that. King if King takes h2, then Black has Knight g4 check, and after the King moves. Um, Say g1, then queen takes g5, yeah. and he's basically a pawn up already, isn't he, for for nothing here? Because he's got he's got he's grabbed the piece back on g5, mm. so um, you know he's he's not even sacrificed the piece there, and he's got an attacking position. Mm. Although in this position, I don't know, White might have um, a better position in the game. Ribka doesn't give um, too much advantage to Black here after knight f4, because Black, I suppose, still has this bad bishop here. So that loss of the dark square bishop, maybe you know, even White might have possibly had this intention to, to just have positional compensation here. Um, in the game though, after this um, bishop takes h2, um, king h1 was played, and now knight g4, so white has to do something about this knight on g5 now, and he supports it with f4. So it seems as though, you know, potentially this bishop is in trouble. Um, it's, it's trapped here. If White can somehow um, defend his position, you know, these pieces could be in trouble. So Black now transfers the Queen to the king side mm. by playing Queen e8. 
Yeah, and this is the key the key linking move in all of Black Strategy, isn't it? Because cause without this move, the Queen doesn't get over to the King's field, and and the attack would just peter out. And, and I, I think from you know from here, White's in a fair bit of trouble. Mm. So White tried to defend the King with with G3, but after Queen H5 and King G2, we now um, come to another critical position in the game. Um, if you want to stop the video here, try and work out a very nice move for black, which is available here. Right, so the move that black played now is to vacate the h2 square, so he played actually bishop g1, so he's got this threat now of queen h2 mate. So um, white has to do something about that threat. And actually he plays knight takes G1. Hmm. So white, um, he allows that queen h2 check because his king can apparently come to safety on f3. Yeah, and it, it looks here, doesn't it, as if if the black attack has petered out because you know there's no mate threat on 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 f2. Um, you know, black's only got a, a knight and a queen attacking, and, and the white king seems covered by a lot of defenders. Hmm. But uh, but Nidorf must have seen when playing bishop g1. Uh, his next move, otherwise he would have just ended up in this position without, without many prospects. He must have seen his next move, and I, and I think this is another good place uh, to pause the video here and see if you can guess what, what, what Black played next. Okay, um, Black's next move is e5. So e5 is immediately threatening um, to, to well, play e5. Well, it's, it's mate, isn't it? Or, or not? No, not quite. Well, not quite because the knight, knight, knight bishop. bishop yeah, the knight, yes. yeah. But it, that that is pretty dangerous threat. Um, that would just be uh, winning lots of material, and um, so so white um, just snaps that pawn off mm -hmm. here. But uh, black's he, he hasn't finished yet. So his, his attack's just starting now. So another great move here, if you want to stop the video. The next move was knight d takes e5. So let's have a look at what this move is doing. So um, white has only one move here, so that's mm. um, very clear. It's f takes e5, f takes mm. e5 is forced. And, and if you look at this this whole sequence of moves that what 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 being played through here, if you look at the white king, he only really, I mean, he only really had the, the e4 square available prior to this, and and now it's the f4 square. And, and Black is really just trying to bludgeon him, bludgeon <laughs> him into a mate here. You know, he's, he's basically throwing the entire kitchen sink at White uh, in, in the hope of delivering a mate. So after Knight takes e5, King f4. Mm. Now, um, this, this actually links up with um, one, of, one of your previous views, doesn't it? With this bishop being, you know, in your game, the, the bishop wasn't liberated. Yeah, yeah, the... the, 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 the <laughs> The, the, the white side where I said it's really important to stop black playing f4. I mean, in that game, <laughs> black didn't have his queen on h2, but I mean, um, you know, in, in the Dutch defence, he, he plays f5, he always wants to play f4, you know, and the idea is that the, the, you know, the bishop comes into the game. Um, so um, when black plays his next move, that, that facilitates the, the f4 push, isn't it? So the king goes back. Yep, and I think we've given the game away that yeah. the next move. Is um, to liberate this bishop is f4, yeah. and so white is actually faced now with queen takes g3 mate. So he has to do something quick about this threat of queen takes g3. Um, so there's two ways to capture that pawn, and he chooses to capture with the e pawn. And now there's yet another brilliant move by black. So can you spot it? If you want to stop the video. The next move Black played was Bishop G4 check, believe it or not. So he's skewering the white king and queen. So White really has to take that bishop, another forcing move. And here, can you see the final combination? So it's a mate in two here, forced mate in two. In fact, it's the only move as well, isn't it? Yeah. So the move played was knight e5 check, mm. 
So white has to take that, and now this F file is under black's control of this rook. And so black finished off the game very elegantly. So there's a mate in one here. If you want to stop the video to try and find it, the mate in one was h5 check. So it was a, an absolute masterpiece, really, how the white king was, um, you know, brutally at attacked. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it, we can only guess, but you wonder how much of this Nidal saw um, when he went for the initial attack. I mean, at some point he had to commit uh, material, didn't he? When he basically allowed his bishop to be entombed on, on h2. So he must have, you know, had the sense that he could, you know, he probably wouldn't have seen the final position, but he must have had the sense that he could drive the the, the white king out into the open by sacrificing the serial. Yeah, it's, it's a really impressive um, attacking game. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much. Thank you.